In this video, we're going to take a look at the escalating beef between UK rappers, K Coke, and Nines, a beef which is deeply rooted in street politics, and which has now turned the streets of Northwest London into a war zone. K Coke and Nines are some of the biggest rappers from the UK. Their songs and videos get millions of plays, and they have strong industry ties. K Coke once being signed to Jay Z's Rock Nation label, and Nines routinely bringing celebrities to his hood, including rapper Tory Lanez and boxer Anthony Joshua. Yo, we at right now? We out here in church, y'all know what it is. Shout my nigga Nines, we all the way out here in London right now, y'all niggas know it's good, huh? But both rappers have also routinely had their shows cancelled due to security concerns. For example, Tory Lanez once tried to bring Nines out to a UK festival named Wireless, but police denied Nines entry due to security reasons. K Coke would also say in interviews that the police would routinely call venues he was scheduled to perform at and tell the owners to cancel his shows or else they wouldn't provide security. This is because, in addition to being successful rappers, Nines and K Coke both have deep street ties, Nines being from Church Road and K Coke being from Stonebridge. Church Road and Stonebridge are notorious estates located in northwest London and have been engaged in a decades long war with each other, a war which has seen dozens of shootings and murders, including of close friends and family members of both rappers. But this war has recently escalated after some very high profile incidents. In summer 2019, Nines was brutally attacked after two rivals from Stonebridge chased down his Porsche and then brutally stabbed him in the face. A video later surfaced on social media showing Nines collapsed behind a row of townhomes, injured, and covered in blood. The attackers themselves also filmed the aftermath of the crash scene. In the video, you can see Nines' damaged Porsche, and the attackers screaming out Stonebridge, while showing the phone they had taken from Nines. They even tagged their IG handles on the incriminating video as a badge of honor, showing to the world that they finally got one of their top ops. One of those attackers, a man named Top Shot AR, even dropped a super disrespectful diss track afterwards called, I See You Crying. This is an obvious play on words, as Nines has a well-known song titled I See You Shining. After the attack, Nines would disappear from social media, as it was rumored that the stabbing had cut into some of his jaw muscles, impacting his ability to talk, and leading people to question if Nines' rap career was over. But the attack on Nines, one of the biggest UK rappers, and a man with deep street ties, sent shockwaves through the streets of Northwest London, and even had the newspapers anticipating a gang war. In this video, we're going to get into all of this. But, before we do that, I'd like to first ask you to please comment, like, and subscribe. It actually helps push this channel, and ensure more content in the future. Nines was born Courtney Freckleton in 1990, and grew up in the infamous Church and Estate in Northwest London, more commonly referred to as Church Road, or Ice City. As a HUD, Church Road has been active for decades, and is home to the Church Road Soldiers, Crime Scene Boys, and Ice City Boys, which are terms used interchangeably. Nines grew up with at least two older brothers, including the Church Road legend known as Zeno, or Brand Zeno. In interviews, Nines would say that he avoided rapping as a teenager, because he was too busy focusing on hustling, something he would be charged for multiple times. But Nines would eventually form part of a now popular rap collective from Church Road, known as the Ice City Boys, or ICB for short. Other well-known members of ICP, and close friends of Nines, include Scraps, Keys, and Trap Star Toxic, many of whom will pop up later in this video. But, because Church Road is an active HUD, they've had a lot of problems with other HUDs in Northwest London, including Stonebridge, which is where Key Coke is from. Key Coke was born Kevin Giorgio in 1985, and grew up in the infamous Stonebridge estate in Northwest London. In a recent interview, Key Coke explains that both he and his younger brother grew up as some of the only white kids in Stonebridge, but that his dad and uncles had a reputation on the estate which the brothers benefited from, and also contributed to as problem kids who raised hell. Like Church Road, Stonebridge would also have many local groups emerge from the area over the years, including the Thugs of Stonebridge, or TOS, and the group Key Coke belongs to, known as USG, which stands for unfortunate souls grieve. However, Stonebridge would see a lot of inner politics between some of these groups, and those politics would periodically result in violence. But, Stonebridge has been at war with Church Road for decades, and this war has no end in sight. At one point, around the mid-2000s, local police even considered Stonebridge a no-go zone, because of the levels of violence on the estate, a place where it was said the law of the jungle applies. There was a lot of stuff that happened there. Police couldn't really go through there. It was, just, it was just one of those places you just couldn't go. Before discussing the beef between Nines and K-Coke, we have to first understand the beef between Church Road and Stonebridge. The Church Road and Stonebridge beef is much bigger than either rapper, but it's the real cause of why K-Coke and Nines have been dissing each other for almost a decade. It's also a real street beef, not like the fake East Coast versus West Coast beef that the American media created in the 1990s in order to sell more records. 
Even though the beef between Church Road and Stonebridge has existed since the 90s, we're going to start in the year 2002 for the purposes of this video. In 2002, there was a crazy series of shootings between the two rivals. These events involved Nine's older brother, Zeno, and Zeno's best friend, a man named Cash, the person who reportedly started the whole crime scene boys movement in Church Road. Zeno and Cash would also become infamous for what they allegedly did during this time. This is what happened. In 2002, a man from Stonebridge named Shorty reportedly shot Cash in the face. Cash and Zeno then allegedly went looking for Shorty, and would catch him, of all places, at a club concert promoting anti-gun violence in the black community. It's reported that, after entering the club, Cash ran up the stairs, and ambushed Shorty, shooting him in the back of the head, before Cash and Zeno both continued shooting him, while Shorty lay on the dance floor. It's reported that the pair also allegedly killed another person from Stonebridge who was in attendance, a man nicknamed Dan's Man. The infamous snitch, Spider, who Keiko talks about on many tracks, would later cooperate with police, and point the finger at Zeno and Cash for killing Shorty and Dan's Man. But this was only one of a series of shooting events between Stonebridge and Church Road at that time. In 2005, Zeno allegedly shot up Stonebridge. It's reported that he drove through Stonebridge late one night, came across a group of approximately 18 people who were hanging out on some steps, and then allegedly fired into the crowd, killing a local man named Troy Robinson. These two shootings made a big impact in Stonebridge, and Troy and Shorty's names can be heard on many early songs by Kay Coke and other affiliated rappers. But, Zeno had become such a problem for his enemies that Stonebridge eventually hunted him down. In April 2008, Zeno was at a barber shop, waiting for his cousin to get a haircut, when a man linked to Stonebridge, named E1, ran into the shop, and shot Zeno in the head, killing him. E1, and his co-accused in the case, Richie Boo, were both charged and convicted for killing Zeno. The police considered it a revenge attack for Shorty and Enns man, and both men were handed lengthy prison sentences. Cash and Zeno had already both been charged for the deaths of Shorty and Enns man. But after Zeno died, Cash faced trial alone. Cash would ultimately beat the case, after the jury refused to accept Spider's testimony, because they believed his testimony was unreliable given that he was a drug dealer and a snitch. However, Cash would later be charged with murder again, in 2011, after getting into a shootout following a Caribbean carnival, and accidentally killing an innocent bystander. He was found guilty, and handed a long prison sentence. This is only a very brief background of the politics between Stonebridge and Church Road, politics which are very deep, and extremely serious. At the same time, the street politics in Northwest London become even more complicated when you realize, that many of the local estates have split into two warring camps. For example, on one side there is Stonebridge, and other estates such as South Kilburn, which is where rapper C. Biz is from. On the other side, there is Church Road, and other estates such as Mozart, which is where rapper Fredo is from. A man can't tell me nothing because no one's dead over here. The ops are dying, they've been dying. This is what I'm going to say, suck your mum, Fredo. You're going to end up like lions, you're going to end up like scraps, you're going to end up like jazz man, you're going to end up like anybody. You name anyone from anywhere, from Church Road, from Mozart, from Kensington Green, you're going to end up like them. This is the context out of which the beef between Nines and K-Coke developed. The first publicized incident involving K Coke and Nines happened around 2010, when a group of youths from Church Road ran up on K Coke at a barber shop. The incident was caught on tape, and you can see K Coke stand his ground before the youths rushed at him. What? 30 man K Coke! Church Road! Crime scene! One order! Yeah, 30 man! What? What? K Coke was left unharmed, but the youths got a hold of his jacket and began pouring beer on it as a sign of disrespect, while also saluting Zeno, who had himself been killed by Stonebridge while at a barbershop. The roads is cold! The roads is cold, fam! You yeah. ran and left your coat today! <laughs> yo, yo, they have some juice! What the fuck? Zeno, Zeno! That K Coke crime I swear that K Coke! Church or You know how it goes! K Coke would later address the barbershop incident in his music. He would say that he didn't deal with the youths or have anything done to them afterwards because he had bigger business to attend to. This explanation was actually based in some truth as around this time Keiko could sign a record deal with Jay-Z's Rock Nation, a deal he wouldn't want to jeopardize by getting arrested. Though, ironically, he would later be arrested for attempted murder in an unrelated incident and still be dropped by Rock Nation regardless. But Nines would slickly address the barbershop incident on his breakthrough track, Trapper of the Year. K Coke had dropped a song called Lay Down Your Weapons, and Nines would address the barbershop incident by saying, quote, niggas violate the ting, no I'll spray them in a second. If I had a record deal, I still ain't laying down my weapon, pussy. This was a direct shot at K Coke, and one of the first times the two rappers would go at each other over the music. K Coke eventually responded to the subliminal with an entire diss track aimed at Nines, called Listen Little Man. 
On this song, Keiko could say that he only told the kids to lay down their weapons, and that he still had his. He would also ask Nines where his weapon was after his brother died, implying that Nines didn't avenge Sino's death. But the most quoted line from this diss track was when Keiko said, quote, Your brother died in 06, the dickheads in the hut giving out turkeys. This line refers to an early video Nines put out before his rap career took off, where he was handing out turkeys to residents of Church Road. In a recent interview, Nines would himself say that, before his career took off, and while in jail, people would come up to him and refer to him as the turkey guy, instead of as Nines the rapper. But that's what's mad. I wasn't even known as Nines at that time. The whole jail was calling me the guy that gave out turkeys. Oh yeah, so, Yo, yeah. that's the guy that gave out turkeys, that's the guy that gave out turkeys. However, on the same diss track, Keiko could make a reference to a chain snatching incident involving Nines. In 2016, there were two major chain snatching incidents involving rappers from both sides. The first incident was between Church Road and another one of their rivals, the Stonebridge-affiliated estate of South Kelburn, which is where rapper C. Biz is from. Sometime during early 2016, C. Biz was robbed of his jewelry while leaving a club in West London. The next day, Nines posted a video of himself with the stolen jewelry while dissing C. Biz, saying not to compare him with these dabbing ass rappers. A told man don't be comparing man to these dabbing ass rappers, B. Tell yeah, your yeah, guy well, come get your this is the old version again, this ain't a new plate. Shortly after the video was posted, police claimed C-Biz plotted revenge, resulting in an innocent man being gunned down with a machine gun in a case of mistaken identity. C-Biz and his co-accused would later beat the case. One of the defendants was a well-known grime musician known as C-Biz. Shortly after his acquittal, David Ozadabe spoke to the media. Did you do much writing in jail? Or? No, not really right. I'm not really right. I'm just trying to put two things together. Like, just thinking. Just thinking, man. His lawyers said he felt deeply aggrieved, spending eight months in jail waiting for his name to be cleared. One of his co-accused, a fellow rapper named Hurricane, would even drop a track called First Day Out, in which he thanks God for being free, and then does the dab dance move, the same dance move Nines was referring to when he said not to compare him to these dabbing ass rappers. A second chain snatching incident would also happen in 2016, when a close friend of Nines and fellow rapper, Big Keys, was reportedly robbed of his ICB chain by Stonebridge. A video would then be posted on social media of people claiming to have robbed the chain. During the video, Nines Trapper of the Year song is playing in the background, the same song in which Nines first is K Coke. A Stonebridge rapper named Top Shot AR would also later shoot a music video in Church Road while wearing the ICB chain. In the song, AR would not only diss Nines, but also K Coke, despite the fact that AR and K Coke are both from Stonebridge. Big Keys and K Coke would then throw shots at each other online. Big Keys claimed to have stabbed K Coke while both of them were in jail. I got everyone <coughs> DMing me this Keiko blood clot bullshit. Bro, when I stabbed him up in the box, he wasn't acting hard, innit? So you can go on hard for your fans, but know the real, innit? When you saw me, he wasn't acting that way. And I poked you up to let you know, innit? Run, tell that you look a dickhead. Keiko then replied saying that Big Keys had taken a beating on the wing the day before. <laughs> but you didn't tell the whole story, did you, mate? Huh? You didn't tell them that you got up on the wing the day before though did you then in june 2019 the biggest incident in the nines and k coke beef would happen when nines was attacked and stabbed in his face two men charged in the case top shot ar and matt beach actually posted their court documents online so there is a record of almost everything that happened in the court documents the police mentioned that there's been a long-standing gang rivalry between both thugs of stonebridge and south Kelburn versus the church road soldiers the documents go on to say that AR and Beach have both been strongly linked to violence and drug supply, and that both men have been arrested for murders in the past. Regarding what happened that night, the documents state that, on June 1, 2019, police got a call around midnight for a crashed Porsche. The Porsche, which was registered to Nines, apparently crashed while trying to navigate a roundabout at a high level of speed. A taxi driver who witnessed the crash said that Nines' Porsche was being chased by a Ford Focus, which police later said was rented by AR. The taxi driver also claimed to have seen both Nines and his passenger armed with guns. After the crash, Nines and the passenger reportedly ran away, before Nines was picked up by a passing BMW. Nines claimed that the driver of the BMW was a fan who had recognized him, and stepped in to help. The BMW was then chased by the same Ford Focus, and there was a second car crash. Sometime during this sequence, both Nines and the driver of the BMW would be attacked with knives, and sent to hospital with serious stab wounds. The paperwork reported that Nines received significant life-altering facial injuries and scarring to the right side of his face. 
At the hospital, Nines was also booked on suspicion of possessing a firearm. During their investigation, police would locate multiple witnesses. One witness stated that they heard one of the attackers tell Nines, quote, that's for the fucking chain. The police believe this was a reference to see Biz's chain that was robbed three years prior. Another witness said they saw one of the attackers use a nearby cargo van as a launch pad for repeatedly jumping on one of the victim's heads. Multiple videos relating to the incident were later recovered, including a video showing the aftermath of the Porsche crash and the attackers showing Nine's phone with Zeno's picture as his lock screen. Hey, what's this? Z in a Z? Huh? Nine's his phone. Pussy. Pussy. Pussy in a Z. Hey, 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 the attack, AR would release a diss track where he continued to mock Zeno's death before saying to free Zeno's killers, E1 and Richie Boo, will also diss in crime scene. Facts, not memes, RIP Zena Z. Free E1 and Richie Boo, how you mean? At 17, I saw brains on the scene, and that's what we really call crime scene. The attack on Nine sent shockwaves through northwest London. To his fans, Nines was a major UK rapper. To the police, Nines was considered the leader of the Church Road soldiers. Either way, the attack was unprecedented, and the streets were bracing for revenge. The attack sparked a wave of violence in summer of 2019, violence which persisted well into 2020. Of the many incidents that happened as a result, we'll look at three major ones. The first incident was the killing of Smalls. Smalls was a friend of Kay Cokes, and was well-loved in both Stonebridge and Monks Park. A little over a month after Nines was attacked, Smalls was executed in broad daylight, outside of a shop in Wembley. The footage of the shooting was leaked online after a police officer reportedly filmed the CCTV footage with a cell phone. In the footage, you can see Small standing outside a shop when a masked man rushes towards him and executes him before he can even realize what's happening. The second incident happened shortly after. Seven minutes after Smalls was killed, the same group of shooters targeted another person from the Stonebridge side. A man named Big French was sitting in his car when someone tried to shoot him, but the gun fortunately jammed. This incident was also caught on CCTV. These two shootings rocked northwest London, but were only a few of the many incidents which resulted from the attack on Nines. However, the third incident really drives home how sad the situation is. After Smalls and Big French were targeted, police would arrest the same four men in connection with both shootings. All four men were either members or affiliates of ICB. Among the arrested included Scraps, Jazzman, YD, and Streets. It's also reported that, while in jail awaiting trial, Scraps was nearly stabbed to death in retaliation for Smalls. Fast forward a year later, to summer 2020, and the third incident happened, when a man shot YD's baby mother, two teenage relatives, and his two-year-old son in the neck, as apparent retaliation for Smalls. The level of callousness that it requires to shoot at babies, women, and teenagers is unthinkable. But, as if that wasn't bad enough, it's rumored that the shooter's own father was later gunned down in Jamaica as retaliation for this third incident. Kikok was reportedly in jail when Smalls Kikok was reportedly in jail when Smalls was killed. But, after being released, he dropped a new Daily Duppy freestyle in which he talked about Smalls passing, saying that he felt broken over the death of his friend. Nines would also recover from his injuries, drop a chart-topping album, and win a MOBO award. However, Nines' bounce back was short-lived, as he